Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome if you're new. I am so glad to have you here at my channel and craft table today. So today's craft is um, partly something that I like to do a lot and then partly something that is new to me that I haven't tried before. So I'm very excited to share this with you. So we're going to be making two t-shirts today. I'm going to be making a shirt for my daughter and then a shirt for our four-year-old granddaughter. And so I wanted to bring you along on that crafting journey. We are going to be using um, on our small little um, granddaughter shirt. She's so cute. She's so sweet and sassy at the same time. So we're going to be using some really super sparkly glitter iron on and then for my daughter we're just gonna she wants a plain t-shirt and she found her own um, SVG that I'll show you in just a moment and for that particular shirt we're going to be using the Cricut printable iron-on for light fabrics now I have used um, printable vinyl I've used sticker paper um, I've used the waterproof sticker paper, but this particular um, product is new to me. I've not used it before, so I'm very excited to try it out. Um, they do have a, um, an option for dark fabrics, but I just chose to purchase the one for light fabrics. You get five um, letter size sheets, so eight and a half by 11, and it does come with a pressing sheet, which is essentially a um, sheet of what I would consider let's see, I would consider this like butcher paper um, maybe I think it's a I think it's more like butcher paper than parchment paper but it does come with one pressing pressing sheet and then it, the five uh, printable iron-on vinyl sheets and this is just for the Maker and Explore and Joy Extra machines. The Joy, the little blue one, definitely is not, it is not for that because you can't do the print bin cut with the Joy. And let's see, this says that it is for creating designs um, for t-shirts, totes, home decor, and any of the print bin cut machines. So. I'm really excited to give this a try. Let's go ahead and head over to Design Space. I would like to show you a little bit of um, design prep for the printing uh, printable iron-on, and then we will head back to the craft table and press the shirts. Here in Design Space, I have pulled up a blank project canvas, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through some of the little intricacies of uploading SVGs from places that you have purchased them or um, you know in other places. So I also want to show you how to use your templates, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing for the shirt for our granddaughter, I brought in this little SVG here that says little firecracker. And what I did is I just went to Upload Image, Browse Computer, and then I went to the place on my computer where the, um, the PNG file was. I clicked on that, and I did Open, and it brings it in looking like this, and I hit Continue. And you can see where the back is transparent, which is great, so I don't need to remove the background. This is perfect the way it is. So I just hit apply and continue and then I chose the multiple layers since I'm using the glitter iron on I don't need to do a printing cut I'm gonna hit continue okay and then you'll get something that looks like this and obviously I want it to be well you can choose your your number of colors so you can do up to nine colors if you're doing the multiple layers option um, I just brought in three colors because I thought that was very cute and then I went to continue and then I named it put it in one of my folders and I hit upload and it's gonna bring it into my canvas so this is what it looks like right now and you can see that the size is 7.12 inches wide by 4.17 inches tall 
The next thing I did is I went to templates and I just scrolled down a little ways to classic t-shirts and I brought in the t-shirts and let's see I'm going to I'm going to change it to a kids short sleeve t-shirt her size is small and I actually want to change the color to red okay and I'm actually gonna I don't like all these grid lines here when I work with templates so I'm gonna come up to this little box here in the corner where the zero zero is and click on that the grid lines are now gone now it does mean that I can't really see the actual neck of my the front of my shirt but it's okay I'm not really too worried about it and then I'm just going to bring this down to the front of the shirt and I, you know quite frankly I think that sizing is totally fine if you want to turn off your template just come down here to your layers panel you can hide your template and you can bring it back the template is not going to cut out at all so I'm just double checking kids short sleeve and small now as far as little firecracker I am going to change this to it's going to look gray on our screen but again it's going to be all beautiful shimmery silver glitter iron on and so that just looks great to me and then I would go to my make screen and I'm not going to save it for right now because I've actually already cut this out to save us some time today. So here we go with the little firecracker and I'm going to be cutting that on my 12 by 12 mat on my maker and I do need to mirror the design because I'm doing iron on. Then I would just click on continue waiting for it to connect with my maker. So once we are connected to our maker, then I, I actually already have glitter iron on bookmarked on my, my dashboard. If you don't, you can always go to browse all materials and just type in the word glitter and you can scroll through the options until you see glitter iron on. And then it's going to give you a um, warning to make sure that your mirror is turned on and that your iron on material is the shiny side down that is the carrier sheet and you want the maker to cut through the actual vinyl which is on the dull side which is the back I like to do more pressure when I'm working with um, infusible ink or glitter iron on something like that and then making sure that my tools are all loaded ready to go so at this point I would load my mat into my maker with the flashing lights, let it go ahead and measure and get everything ready and then press go as prompted. It would then cut everything out and I'd be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this since I actually already have this um, cut out ready to go and I'm going to come back to my screen. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn those little boxes off this point I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide the little firecracker because I want to show you the printable iron-on options and so I'm going to go back to my t-shirt template okay, so I have changed the template from the red shirt to a women's large and that's easy to do you just click on your template you change the size up here in the top and what style and then you change the color right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off all of the grid lines because I don't need to see them. And then now we're going to bring in our um, image that I got off of Etsy. So my daughter chose her own design. I'm going to go to upload. And I'm actually, I have it already in here, but I want to show you how I uploaded it because this time we're doing a print and cut instead of a regular cut file. So I'm going to go to browse and I'm going to go find my design, bring it in, hit continue. I can see that my background is transparent so I do not need to remove background. I'm just going to hit apply and continue. Now I'm going to skip multiple layers. This is only if I would need it to be a cut file and this is just a single layer which I don't need. I need this to be a flat graphic. So this is for the print and cut projects. 
I'm going to hit continue and it will give me a name. I can change the name if I want or I can just put it into a folder and then hit upload and it will bring this to my canvas. You can see that this is now on my canvas and it is ginormous. So I'm actually going to leave it big for right now because if you notice on this design, actually let me come down here. I'm going to click on the eyeball of the classic t-shirts and I'm just going to turn off the t-shirts for just a moment because when you see this design, it has a great distressed look, it has vibrant color, I just love it. However, I've got stars that are not connected to the hand. So what we're going to do is we are going to create an offset. I basically am going to create an offset just like I would if I was doing a sticker. And what that will allow is that I will have one piece of vinyl and I won't have all these separate little stars that I have to figure out how to place them. So I'm going to go up here to offset and then I'm going to change the size. So I kind of usually try the 0.125. So that is an eighth of an inch. And you'll notice here that this star is not connected. These aren't connected. Neither are these. So I'm actually going to try, how about we try 0 0.140 and see what happens. So it's really not didn't get so now I'm going to go a little bit bigger so I'm going to keep going now you can see right here the red star is starting to um, touch the handprint this one's really close so I'm going to keep going let's try 0.5 okay I still don't have quite what I want. So I'm going to go back into offset and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now in my opinion that's a little too big. And what I'm looking for is I don't want the rest of the shirt to be too wide of an offset. So how about 10? 5.10. All right so I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit apply. And I'm not going to worry about the color for right now because when I move this out of the way, I can see that everything is the way I wanted. Okay, and I can just bring that back over there. You get all through that and you realize, oh, I forgot to change the color of my offset. So what you do is you can just undo all of that. I'm going to go back to offset and I'm going to hit apply. Okay, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to my colors menu and I'm going to click on white. Now it has changed the way I want. So we're good. While this is all connected, okay, then I'm going to select both items and I'm going to say flatten down here in the bottom of my layers panel. Now this is one print and cut image. Okay, so we have a warning. Now what I want to do is turn back on my templates and I need to resize this to make it more manageable for my shirt, obviously. So I'm going to click on my red exclamation point and it says that the image is too large for the 8.5 by 11 paper that we're going to use and I can just auto resize the image and it will turn it into a 7.43 by 9.48 and I'm just going to bring that here in the middle of the shirt and that actually looks pretty great. Since this is ready to go I am going to go to my make screen and we're going to connect to our machine and our printer and everything from this make screen. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my material size right here is set for 8.5 by 11 which is great and I'm going to mirror the design just like I would with any other iron-on vinyl project. And then I'm going to hit continue. And then just like our sticker project that we did, I believe we just did a sticker project the other day. I can link that tutorial for you. And I also did one where we decorated our joy with printable vinyl. 
um, we're going to send this to the printer. So we select printer. It brings up our print menu. So I'm just going to leave this selection of my printer. I'm using an HP Envy 7640 series. I love this printer. It does work really well for me. So I really love it. And I'm going to turn the bleed off. And the reason why is because I have that white offset going around. So I don't need to worry about the bleed. But I am going to do system dialog. And the only reason why is because I want to make sure that I have the print quality selected at the best Level. If you are on a Mac, you may find that your print system dialog shows up behind your Cricut Design Space um, view. So you might have to minimize your Cricut Design Space just for a moment so that you can see your print dialog. We're going to connect to the printer. Okay, and then we would go to our preferences. And then I'm literally going to just double check these preferences here. And then I'm going to go to quality. And then I'm going to choose best. And then I'll click on OK. At this point, I would click print. But I do not want to click print because I have already printed my design prior to filming. It's going to cancel out of that. Now, once everything has been printed, then I will just go look for the, um, I'm going to go into Browse All Materials, and I am going to look for Printable, and then I'm going to come right here where it says Printable Iron-On, and I would either choose Dark or Light, and the product I have is the light one, so I would choose Light. Click Done, and I'm going to leave that at default pressure, and just like the last project, I would load this on my mat, brayer it down like normal, and load it into the machine, hit the flashing arrows, and the go button as prompted by Cricut Design Space on my screen. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of Design Space since I have everything ready to go, and we're going to head back over to the craft table and get these shirts put together. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and leave out this design. And um, everything is fairly large, so I think that the reading won't be too difficult. I absolutely love sparkle shine glitter. And I'm hoping that our little firecracker will too. I'm excited going to get this in the mail. This is going all the way back to Texas. And okay. So it looks like this. We've got our little, we've got um, our stars here. And then I've got just a few things to weed out here. I'm going to pull out our middles while our easy press is heating up. Very excited. Fourth of July is this coming week. We are going to be having fun with extended family and lots of activities. Our son is coming home for a couple of weeks on leave and it's just going to be a great time. Okay, so I'm just double checking little and firecracker. Okay, so this is weeded out. I'm going to go ahead and remove these items so that they don't get pressed onto my shirt. And before I toss this, oh, see, here is a little star. And it's actually supposed to come over here. I'm glad I double checked that. So before I get rid of this, I am just looking to see if there are any. It's just a couple of stars. I'm going to grab these. Okay, we just had three little rogue stars that decided to stay behind. We recovered those. 
And I'm going to move this off to the side for just right now. And we're going to get our shirt ready for pressing. I have to laugh. I had bought a pink shirt because, you know, she loves pink. Girl after my own heart. And I had bought an extra small and realized that it'll fit her body, but it'll be too short. So I went to go get a new one. And they're all sold out. So I guess everybody in my state <laughs> who is a size youth small loves to wear pink. Okay, I'm just going to go over this with our lint roller. And our easy press is ready. So we're going to be pressing this at 330 degrees, firm pressure for 30 seconds. And then we, uh, we will turn it over and I'll probably just do another 5 to 10 seconds. And then we will get this um, cooled down so we can reveal the design. The first thing that I'm going to do is bring in the press. And I'm just going to go over the shirt to make sure that there is, you know, it's pressed, no wrinkles, no moisture, etc. Back on its cradle for a moment. Okay, and then what I like to do is I like to fold my design, the design itself just kind of in half and get a little crease somewhere so right here and then I just like to bring it down and I'm going to put it about right there now they there are some t-shirt guides that you can print out for yourself I know that Jennifer Maker has a whole set of them and I I used to use those religiously and I've just gotten to wear I've done so many shirts now that I can line them up pretty good and I think this I think this looks great so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in set that down hit my start button and we're gonna do firm pressure okay and then I always like to just turn my design over and I like to give it about five or so seconds on the back just for a few seconds okay and then I'm going to remove this from the easy press mat if I leave it on that mat it will absolutely stay hot for quite a while. If I put it on my glass mat, then it will cool down really quickly. Okay, and then as the shirt continues to cool and go back to normal, then this dark iron um, impression will cease to exist. And this is already cool. Like I can totally peel this up. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking the sheet off here. And with any luck, we will not have to repress anything. And I'm just going to go slow. And I like to go at a diagonal and hold on to the letters. Okay, there is our design. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. I think I do still have a tiny piece of my carrier sheet on my E. That's funny. That's never happened. And on my T. <laughs> okay, that is the funniest thing. In the hundreds of shirts I've done, I've never had that happen. That's so funny. Okay. Well, this was a success. What a perfect press. And I am so excited to get this in the mail for her tomorrow so that she will be able to be a little festive firecracker for 4th of July. Okay, let's move on to shirt number two, which is the printable iron-on vinyl. This is the printable iron-on vinyl, and I am just going to 
pull this off of my mat just like any other vinyl and then you know this has our cut line all on it so I am just going to pull off around and take out the the um, negative space that we do not need and this is quite thin really very thin so I am I'm just going to work slowly and get this weeded so that we can pull this off of the backer. Okay, so I have gotten all of the negative space off of here and then I'm just going to very carefully start lifting this from the backer sheet. Um, I need to be very careful and very mindful to not pull too hard or too fast because your design will stretch. And these little outer stars, they are already wanting to come off of the backer, so that will be a great thing. And this is really, really thin, um, almost like um, rice paper, like for cake decorating. I don't know if you're familiar with that, um, but it's like super, super thin, almost transparent or opaque paper, like a, made out of a, well, it's rice paper that's sweet and edible. We use it a lot for airbrushing designs on cakes. This reminds me a lot of that. Oh, I see one tiny little piece that I need to weed out. Another thing I do is I turn my backer paper and it does really help to release. Let me grab this one tiny spot. There we go, perfect. Okay, this weeded super nicely. I, like I said, I've never used this product before. And so far, I am really liking this. I'm glad I purchased this for, for her to have the design that she wanted. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift this aside for now. We're going to go ahead and prep our shirt, just like we did on the previous shirt. With adult shirts, I do like to put a crease down the middle of the shirt. And this just really helps with lining everything up. So I'm going to just get the shirt nice and flat, line up the shoulder seams. And then we'll press a crease down the middle. Okay, I think that is good. All right, here is our shirt. And another thing I do is I line up let me move this out of the way. I line up the top of the shirt with the top of my pressing mat, and I find that it helps me to avoid that collar. This crease right here is the middle of the shirt. So again, we're going to just lint roll. Printable iron on vinyl. That is a temperature of 315 for 30 seconds. And you do have to use the pressing sheet that they sent with the product. Okay, so let's get this onto the shirt. Okay, and because this one is so large, I am going to go ahead and just measure the sides just to double check that I'm not like majorly off anywhere. But this is probably about two-ish inches. I'll bring it down a little bit. It only needs to be a couple of inches below the collar. Let's see. 
Okay. All right, that looks good even on both sides and yeah, it's about, oh, it's about two and three quarters from the collar. So that's great. Okay, so we have our pressing mat, we have our shirt, we have the design and the, the um, image is facing up. So this is the printed side and this is the back side. Okay, and we're gonna put our pressing sheet down on the design. And next we're gonna bring in a press. Okay, 315 for 30 seconds. And we're going to be using firm pressure. And something also about shirts, um, if you're not um, familiar, is you definitely need to wash them inside out. I like to wash them on cold. I, Depending on the type of iron-on, sometimes I hang them up. Um, but I, you could do a low tumble dry, but I tend to hang them up. And, okay, bring that out. Okay, I'm going to lift this. And, oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. I don't feel any lifting on the sides, so I don't think I have to press the back like normal. Okay, I'm going to remove that mat. I'm just going to let this sit here for a minute on the glass mat. Get all of that heat out. And this is great. You can't even hardly tell that there is a white offset. This literally looks like it was printed on the shirt itself. Almost like uh, sublimation without really being sublimation. This is so cool. Okay, well, I would say that both of these projects were a success. And this is just glitter iron on. Um, in fact, this is the Hobby Lobby brand glitter iron on. And I would say that it is definitely a win for $6.99. Yep. Okay, so the Hobby Lobby glitter iron on is a win. And cute little shirt to send to our granddaughter. I can't wait for her to open it and be able to wear this. She will look so adorable. And then the new to me project of printable iron-on vinyl. I can tell that I will be using this product way more in the future because my daughter loves graphic t-shirts and this is a great way to allow her to express herself and I can still make her shirts because I think it's so fun. And so I think this is just fantastic. I don't remember what I paid for this, but I just I just purchased it on Amazon. So it is absolutely a winner. And the pressing sheet, I'm just going to stick that back in here and save that for the next project. So fantastic. Okay, well, I hope that you found this video was informative, insightful, and inspirational, and that you will try out printable iron-on vinyl for yourself. It was so fun and such a success. Um, enjoy time with your family this coming up week. I hope to still have a few videos out over the next week, week and a half. Um, may not be as many as normal, but um, until I see you again in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day, and as always, happy crafting.